1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we're dealing with the gifts of the Spirit, and tonight we're going to continue talking about the manifestation gifts. We're going to spend some time on this, if that's all right with you. Nobody's in a hurry to get through this, all right? We want to, we want to get precept upon precept and, and line upon line. Uh, we, we want to lay groundwork. We want to build a good foundation uh, because I do believe that the Lord is moving and working uh, in this day and in this time. Sometimes we can look around. We can listen to the news. We can, we can look around. We can, we can become... Uh, a little negative about how things are going in the world. How many knows that the America's a mess? Yes. <laughs> Spiritually, we're a mess. Psychologically, we're a mess. It. Uh, I, I'm telling you, you just don't never know from day to day what you're going to hear about some break out somewhere. And uh, so uh, our cities are a mess. Uh, uh, you know, there's uh, like I said, there's such an immorality, uh, such spiritual blindness today. And uh, so, so the report is not terribly good from the uh, uh, from that side of things. But may I say to you that God's never without a plan. Amen. And uh, he's, he went from generation to generation to generation to generation, always with a plan. Amen. And uh, we're, we're living in the last days, I believe. Yes. Amen. And I believe we're living in perilous times. Yes. Amen. But I believe that where sin abounds, grace is much more abound. I believe that the grace of God is being uh, manifested in this hour. And as I mentioned last week, I believe that what's going to have to take place as we go forward here in America in particular is we've got to get back to uh, bringing people to a place uh, uh, where they can have an experience with a living God. Yeah. Amen. Getting people, you know, uh, getting them to a church where it's real nice and comfortable and sitting them down and letting them hear some real good singing and then maybe a nice sermonette uh, for Christianettes. And, uh, you know, here and there catch uh, one or two that will be okay with it and, and will sign up and, and come to church and then just become another one of those Christianettes that's satisfied with the sermonette. Uh, you know, that's not going to do it going forward. But the churches will empty out if that's if that's the uh, way we're going to uh, uh, view uh, advancing the kingdom in the future. What I believe it's going to take it's it's going to take uh, it's going to take people having an encounter, Amen. an experience with the living God. Uh, you know, uh, you know how God's saving people are, uh, across the Muslim world. He's just showing up. Amen. He's showing up in their bedrooms. He's walking into their dreams while they're asleep. He's, he, 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 you know, young and old. Little children are talking about seeing angels and angels telling them about Jesus and, and Jesus literally coming to people and, and talking to them about their soul and getting them saved rather without anybody. Yeah. Now I'm sure there's somebody praying. There's a whole lot of folks probably praying and believing God for them to get saved. I do. Uh, uh, but, um, but God, I think it's going to take some power encounters Amen. I think we need to get back to kind of maybe thinking about the days of Smith Wigglesworth or Amy Semple yes. McPherson and just believing yeah. uh, that God is able to do the work. Yes. God's able to do it. Yeah. Yes. God's able to save a soul. Yes. Amen. And uh, we need to depend on Him to do that. We need to uh, uh, allow Him to do it. And the Bible gives us the way that He's done it uh, in the past, uh, certainly in, in, in Bible days. And uh, we can take what the Word of God gives to us and then we can begin to believe God uh, to do, do that in this day and time. Uh, we've talked about that. We've, we've touched on the uh, ministry gifts and the body gifts and we'll probably revisit the body gifts uh, before long because everybody's got a, a gift that they can uh, contribute to uh, the edification of the body of Christ. But also I believe that the, the manifestation gifts are, are important as well. Uh, as, you, as you read about the ministry of Peter and Paul, as they went out and, and, and advanced the kingdom and planted churches and got souls saved, the, 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 the uh, miracle working power of God, the, God. Listen, God confirmed the word with signs. Yes. Yeah. Amen. And so people got healed and, yes. and people got delivered and and, and, and people were just uh, set free because of the power of God, the, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. 
So I'm not going to back off on that. I'm not going to get nice and, and uh, try not to uh, offend people and not be controversial uh, uh, as long as I believe that it's biblical. Amen. Now, if you get crazy on us, we may have to call you aside and say, hey, wait a minute now. Uh, but uh, as far as if anything's biblical, I'm all for it. Let's go for it. I, I'm, not, uh, I'm going to be like Elijah, and, um, and we're going to get on the mountain, and we're going to say, okay, power of God, it's up to you. You, you, re, you revealed it. We're just going to let the lion out. Yes. Remember? We're going to let the lion out, and we're going to let him defend himself. Praise God. Praise God. And, uh, so, so I think it's important that we focus on the manifestation of gifts. Uh, some, all the gifts, but in these in particular. Verse 31 of this chapter says, but earnestly desire, earnestly desire, earnestly desire the best gifts. Yes. So I, I you know, I, I told y'all before that I have FOMO. Uh, that's the fear of missing out. Uh, I believe God's on the move. God's touching churches all across the country. We hear great reports of revival, and and uh, I don't want to miss out on that. I, I don't want to be sitting here, uh, you know, just kind of, uh, you know, in, in some sort of uh, fog. Uh, while God moves and does things all around me, I want to be part of it. I want to, I want to see God here. I want to see God move here. I want to be like Elisha and pick up the mantle and go over and strike the uh, water and say, where is the Lord God of Elijah? Where is the uh, uh, Father uh, of our uh, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Amen. I'm not putting him to the test, but I'm going to believe what he says he wants to do in his word. And as I understand it, he loves to be believed. Yes. He loves to be believed. And you've got to believe. So we've got to have some faith. God, I believe God works uh, uh, contrary to our faith very much. Now faith is impossible to believe. That's right. And so I, I, I'm, I'm going to say that, that we're going to spend a lot of time here on, these, on the Holy Spirit. That was a whole part of this uh, study that we started. Uh, but also on these gifts because we need, we need faith. We need strong faith, deep faith yes. that we can be part of this, that we can see the move of God, yes. and that, that the, these gifts uh, will be manifested. Okay? That's my intro. All right. Chapter 12. We'll just start at verse 7. And this is what Paul writes to the church there at Corinth. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another the, and I understand this, workings is also is in plural, workings of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But the one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as He wills. All right, now these gifts here, we're going to, once again, we'll take our time as we, get, uh, as we move uh, forward in this. We'll take our time with each of these gifts and identify them and define them and uh, try to find ways to illustrate how they work. Uh, but uh, some of us have probably, uh, we're familiar with uh, uh, these to, to some degree. And so we're going to trust the Holy Spirit to manifest himself through these avenues. Yes. Amen. We used to just get, we Pentecostal used to get excited because the Lord would move and somebody would shout or fall out or speak. And all, that, all that's good. I'm, I'm glad for those manifestations. But I want to see these avenues. Uh, I want to see him express himself in these ways. Amen. Because this is the biblical way. Amen. Uh, and so we can shout about the other. But I'd rather, I'll tell you right now what we need are these, because these are tools. These are equipment. These are weapons yes. that the, the Holy Spirit will use to once again advance the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. And uh, so it's very important then. So uh, I want you to see how important it is that these different gifts these giftings are used. We've all seen, uh, you know, well, whether you like him or not, uh, we've all seen what uh, old Pat Robertson has done with the word of knowledge through his 700 Club. There's countless thousands of people around the world, probably uh, tens of thousands, maybe more than that, that can testify. This man identified what was wrong with me. I believed what he said and I was healed or delivered. 
Heard somebody here a couple of weeks ago. Great, uh, a wonderful, amazing testimony of how they were healed of a, of a terrible situation, a medical situation. A young man, uh, because of just a word he heard uh, from Pat Roberts. And we've all seen Benny Hinn and the miracles, the, the workings of, of uh, or the, uh, the gifts of healings that have taken place in his ministry as he's gone out and let the Lord use him. Amen. Healed, you know, many were healed all across the country. The people to this day will say, uh, I had cancer or I had you know, this or that and, and went to that meeting or watching them on TV, just listening to them on TV and, and being healed. And so God used So that's the, that's the avenues that the Lord will use in, in all sorts of different ways here. So that's just an example and how important that is. And so I'm looking for that here. I'm looking for a word of knowledge here. I'm looking for a word of wisdom here. I'm looking for a tongue and interpretation, a prophecy. I'm looking for discerning of spirits. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I believe that that's possible. We need to we need to believe for it. Okay. So I believe, of course, and this is really the the, the the main part of this tonight. I think for us to take a hold of is that God will use anybody in the in the body of Christ and every member of the body of Christ to to give way to that expression of the Holy Spirit. None of us are disqualified. None of you sitting here right now are disqualified from being used by God. You know how I know that? Because he used a donkey to talk to Balaam. Amen? Amen. Amen. And, and, and so that, that, that tells us a lot, uh, but if God's got something to get done, he'll do it. And he'll do it through whomever he can. And sometimes that, uh, and let me just say, sometimes the, uh, the vessel isn't always what we think it should be. Amen. Sometimes he may shake us up just to show us this is all by grace, y'all. It ain't that person. Now, wasn't that donkey? Yeah. Now, did they did they revere that donkey and and uh, put garlands around his neck and and you know I don't think so. I, I think Balaam beat up on him, didn't he? <laughs> uh, so I, I, uh, and so sometimes it, you know uh, us uh, anointed people we probably gonna get beat up on when we speak the word of the Lord to folks like Jeremiah and different ones, uh, but. But the reality is it's not, the, it's not so much the vessel, but it's God using that vessel. So we can say this here. I'm kind of jumping ahead of some things here. But, but there's a couple of things we have to be careful of, a couple of dangers. One, we don't elevate the person that God's using in the manifestation gifts yeah, right. because uh, he'll use anybody. Amen. He, he might use the janitor instead of the apostle in the service, like I told you uh, last week. Uh, uh, he, he, he may he may use anybody, uh, but but the but the reality is it's not the vessel, it's not the person. So we can't lift those people up because the, listen, the cor the cor the church of Corinth was a mess, Amen. very charismatic, but a great big mess, and they needed a lot of correction. And uh, so sometimes the person God will use, uh, uh, we may say, well, how could he use that person? How could he use them? That they don't really stand out. Or, so we, we, dis, we dismiss the gift, or we say, oh, they spoke in tongues and, and there was an interpretation and then elevate them as, as some great spiritual uh, you know, giant. They may not be. Amen? Uh, I, I got, uh, you know, I wasn't saved very long. I realized some of the people shouting and running around in the church would go out and park a lot and run people down for a dog. Yeah, Brother Jesse, yeah, I, I've seen that too. Come on now. And so, uh, so we, we have to be careful that we don't uh, fall into any one of those two dangers. We, we want to honor the Lord for moving and working. Yes. Amen. Right. Now, that's good when God, listen, God, listen, it's like uh, I heard Derek Prince uh, say one time about how the gifts of the Spirit are like ornaments on a Christmas tree. Okay? It don't take nothing to put it up there. There it is. It looks nice. It's all that. He said, but now the fruit of the Spirit, how many know you don't just put an apple on an apple tree? It takes some work. It takes some time. It takes cultiv cultivation. It takes maturity for that fruit to uh, uh, grow and to be worth eating. Yeah. Okay? And uh, so what we want is a tree that's got apples growing on it and some ornaments. Okay? That, that would be a whole lot, that would be a whole lot uh, more effective for us in the kingdom if we had people growing in maturity and manifesting the gifts of the Spirit. We won't fall into such troubles that way. And there's been a lot of very gifted people that's fell into a lot of troubles uh, in the past. And, and uh, uh, the good news is the gifts of the callings are without repentance. Amen. 
Uh, we could go on and on. Uh, I, I, you know, one of the things that we have to be careful of is there's a lot of folks out there, and I see them on Twitter and, and uh, Facebook sometimes, and they're real strong, you know. They like to run us Pentecostals down and Charismatics, and they, they'll point out all the, uh, the bad news or negative kind of stuff. But the reality is, nothing has changed. God is still the same God that He always was. There was never a day of miracles. He's a God of miracles. Amen? Amen? The gifts, there's not one scripture in this book. There's one little scripture they'll try to use, and it don't make sense when they use it, uh, about the cessation of the gifts. Now, that's what they call the gifts. When, the, when we got the Bible, when the Bible came together, we didn't need the gifts anymore. We don't need apostles or prophets anymore. We don't need uh, uh, you know people uh, laying hands on the sick anymore. So there's a lot of folks out there that really get all worked up about that kind of stuff. I ignore them. They need to go back to uh, uh, Pentecost, uh, in my opinion, and get filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because that's the problem. Uh, let me just say that, that, that one of the biggest problems is that we shy away from the supernatural. Now what you need to do is get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Good. Yeah. Amen. Just step over into the supernatural one time and then stay in it Amen. as much as you can. That makes sense? Uh, you know, uh, uh, getting baptized in the Holy Ghost and, and, the, and with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, to me, that's like the gateway drug into the supernatural. Does that makes sense? I mean, once, once you begin to flow in the supernatural, uh, generally speaking, the gifts of the Spirit are generally going to be right there some, somewhere. Remember the, 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 those, those folks at Ephesus when Paul laid hands on them, so they began to speak in other tongues and prophesy. I mean, the gifts came on them uh, big time, and uh, so get over. Don't be don't be afraid of the supernatural. Uh, whatever your position is on tongues, whatever, but get filled with the Holy Ghost. Get filled with the Spirit of God. Get over into that realm and and uh, and believe God for it. Amen. Amen. And and so just start to flow. All right. <clears throat> And then the, the thing that I think is uh, also a big part of what we want to talk about tonight. And once again, the main premise here is everybody that's a part of the body of Christ can be used of God in the gifts of the Spirit. And I don't want you backing off of it or not thinking it's for you or that you can have any uh, uh, you know, share in this at all because well, I'm not good enough. I don't mat you know, I don't line up. Uh, I'm not very smart or, or whatever. Uh, I don't want you to I don't want you to think that you are not somehow uh, a candidate to be used of the Lord Amen. and the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. Now, let me just uh, show you something here. First of all, let's talk about this. The word uh, 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 for gifts here in 2 Corinthians, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the word here, if you look at verse 4, the word for gifts there is char charisma. Charisma. Now, charis is a word in general that means grace. <coughs> Charisma makes it a form of that grace being expressed. Okay? So I want to I I just give you a little, a little uh, review of what grace is all about. What grace is, is that God does for us regardless of our worthiness or whether or not we deserve it. Thank you. That's what grace is. Grace is, is God doing something for us, not because of what's in us, but because of what's in Him. Yes. Okay? So grace then is, 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 is something that uh, we need to associate with these gifts. They're called grace gifts. That's what it is in the Greek. It's a grace gift. And it's a gift. It's the gifts of the Spirit. Grace is God loving us even though we don't deserve it. Grace is God saving us even though we've done nothing to earn it or deserve it. Grace is God giving to us what we need even though we don't deserve it, but He still gives it to us anyway. Okay, That's what grace is all about. Uh, great, there's lots of different ways we could define grace, but but, but in, a, in a nutshell, grace is the unmerited favor of God. Unmerited. I didn't earn it. I can't deserve it or earn it in any way. 
God gives it to me because that's just how he, that's just how he wants to work. All right, now let's, let's talk about this. Now, uh, Ephesians 2, of course, is, is a great uh, passage there in verses 8 and 9 about uh, grace. It says, for by grace, by charisma, yeah, for by charisma, by charisma, you've been saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. How many knows what a gift is? Okay? A gift is something someone gives to somebody else for not for free. Not but yet yeah, it's free. It's not because they've earned it or deserved it. They give them that gift. It's a free gift. Okay? So by for by grace you've been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So when we get to heaven, we got nothing we can boast about. All we can say is, God, you saved me. You did the work. You got into my life. You, you touched me. You helped me. And uh, you, you gave me the opportunity to step over into your family just because you offered it to me. You invited me into it. Amen. Yeah. All right. And so it's not of works. It's not because I got baptized or baptized in a certain way. It's not because I belong to a certain denomination. It's not because I believed in a certain doctrine. Also, it all comes down to whether you believe Jesus died and was raised up from the dead and is the Lord. Amen. Some of us like to quibble and fight about all kinds of stuff, but a lot of it is not salvific or doesn't matter in terms of salvation. So don't argue about all that stuff and get all worked up. All right, uh, Romans 6.23 is another great verse, I think, that brings it out for us. It says, for the wages of sin is death. The wages. I mean, we all know what wages are, don't you? If you work, you get to Friday, you're looking for your paycheck. Amen. Right? That's a wage. You've earned it. You've worked for it. You've spent time to get it. You, you have uh, uh, offered something uh, in, in return for a wage. That's a wage. If we got it, listen. If we got justice, if we got what we deserve from the Lord, we'll all be going to hell. Yep. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I don't want justice. I want mercy. <laughs> my, my, my cry is, Lord, be merciful to me a sinner. Amen. Right. Amen. And uh, so that's the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God. The gift. Now, if I were to give uh, a, a, a gift to my uh, child. Well, let's say I give them a Christmas gift. Two weeks later, they get in trouble. I take it back from them. Well, it was no longer a gift. It had become a wage. Or a loan. Yeah. Uh, or a loan. Yeah. It's it's not it's not a gift if it's something you can take back. Amen. Um, but the gift of God to us, the gift, is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So it's a gift. We receive it. What he's looking for is for you to humble yourself. How do we receive uh, what God wants us to have? We humbly receive it. Yes. Now the minute you think that I earned this, boom, it's over. Uh, the minute you think uh, I deserve this, I've earned this, uh, I'm better than these folks or better than... Uh, uh, this church member or, or, or whatever put ourselves in some kind of a category where we have deserved or earned it it's no longer grace mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's no longer grace anybody get that now? Yes. Uh, listen, James 4 and 6 uh, and this is the second time this, this Old Testament verse is quoted in the New Testament he says but God gives more grace therefore he says God resists the proud yes. but gives grace to the humble. So humbly, humbly we come before him. Father, I believe your word. I believe what you've promised. I believe Jesus died for my sins. I believe Jesus has done the work. I receive what you offer to me, Jesus. I, I, I take it. I receive it. I receive it. It's mine uh, because you have given it to me. All right, you get that? You gave it to me. I take it. You make it, you make it yours. Because he's given it to you as a gift. So in salvation we see how that works. And it works the same exact way with the gifting of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Most people don't receive the Holy Spirit. Most people, in terms of the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Now the Holy Spirit dwells in everybody that's born again. That's right. Amen. Amen. 
But the main reason I have found that people don't receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit is they don't feel like they're worthy of it. They don't feel like they, they qualify for it. Okay? And, and, and literally, it's, to me, it's, a, it's just coming to a place. And there may be a process in this. And I'm not saying it may not take some time. But um, it doesn't necessarily have to. But there's a process where we humble ourselves before the Lord and receive what He, what he has for us. Yeah. Okay? We just receive it. Uh, humbly. I don't deserve this. I don't, I've not earned this. But it's the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen? It's the gift. And so we receive it uh, humbly. We receive it by faith. How do we... All, how, all of this works, of course, as we see uh, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 7, that we receive it by faith. God says that I believe it. God wants me to have it. I'm going to, I'm going to take it. And I'm going to make it mine in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. All right, praise God. All right, so let's look at these. Uh, uh, let's, let's put this in the context of the gifts of the Spirit, okay? All right, so we, we already read this one, but I want you to no, notice something here. Here's what I want you to take a hold of. And sometimes we're, we're so scared of not being humble or we don't want to avoid, you know, we don't want there to be any controversy or, or confusion. Uh, we try to, you know, we, we try to make it, well, God, you know, uh, let's just say Benny Hinn. To me, it would be ridiculous for Benny Hinn to say, I don't have the gifts of healings in my life. I don't have that in my ministry. That would be ridiculous for him to say or for Smith Wigglesworth to have said that. That would be ridiculous. It would be ridiculous to say that. Okay? Notice what it says here in 1 Corinthians 12, 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given, is given to each one for the profit of all. Now, do you see that? Yeah. It's been given. That charisma, that gift of grace, that grace gift has been given to each one of us. Isn't that what it says? So take note of that. Given to each one. So Paul obviously believed God's Spirit would give that to someone. All right. Now, um, well, let's move on. All right. Having then gifts, or charisma, once again, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. Having, having then gifts. Having. We can have a gift. We've been given a gift. And so we have a gift. And it could be gifts. It could be a gift mix. Okay? All right. 1 Corinthians 7 and 7. Each one has his own charisma from God. Each one has his own gift. And does anybody see the pattern here? We, we can say we have the gifts. You can say... If, if God has worked in you in a certain way. Now I can just say this tonight. That in my ministry, in my Christian life, God has, God has given to me tongues and interpretation, prophecy, and, and, and those three in particular, and He's manifested Himself in different ways where I can't really say I have those gifts because He can use anybody at any time to do anything that needs to be done uh, to meet the need. At the moment, yes, that's right. Okay? But, you know, so I laid hands on the sick. I, we, I laid a hand on somebody right here. Right, I was standing right about here. I think it was right here. I laid hands on a woman and a tumor disappeared in her neck. Praise the Lord. Praise now, I, I'm not going to tell you that I have the gifts of healings. God can use me to lay hands on the sick and then recover. Mm -hmm. Certainly. But I know over the course of my 35 or so years in Christ... I've prophesied numerous times. I've spoken tongues and interpreted it. Or I have interpreted what somebody else spoke in tongues. So I know that. I have those gifts. I have my gift from God. Amen. My gifts, my giftings are there. So y'all get that? Mm -hmm. So we can't be scared of it. We can't say, oh, well, it's not me. And, you know, oh, okay. Uh, all right. Well, it is you. It's God using you. Amen. Anybody get this? this yes. I hope this helps somebody. I hope this helps somebody because I think, once again, one of the big problems is we, we, we shy away. We, we back off. We're scared of it. Go for it. Amen? 
Or, or all, now, this is what Paul says a little later in 1 Corinthians 12. And he's trying to make a point here. So this is a rhetorical question. The answer is no. All right, but, but I want you to catch the, the positive side of it. Okay? He says, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles? Do all have gifts of healings? Yeah. Do all speak with tongues? Do all of her? Well, his, his answer here is no, because there's all kinds of different giftings. But obviously, all of us don't have the same gift, but some obviously do. So his point here is some do have that gift. They have that gift. That gift of teaching. That's another ministry that I can lay claim to. I believe I'm a teacher. That's what I'm doing right now. Amen. I'm teaching. Uh, it can be uh, any number of these things here. All right, and then 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 14. Paul obviously believed Timothy had a gift. Yes. Then it was, in, you know, notice what it says. Do not neglect the charisma that is in you, which was given to you. By prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the eldership. So obviously they laid hands on him and, 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 and a gift was released in him. Amen. Okay? You know, I've told y'all this before. I, I asked the Lord one time before, why can somebody just get healed, believe in God, and why does somebody else have to have hands laid on them? And the, and the Lord said to me, because I need to remind everybody here and there that they need the body. They need the body of Christ. And so sometimes something, and, and a lot of times with, with the release of gifts in people, it takes a laying on of hands. Amen. Therefore I remind you, he says to Timothy again in 2 Timothy 1 and 6, therefore I remind you to stir up the charisma of God that is in you through the laying on of my hands. In you. There's a gift in him. He believes there's a gift in him. Amen. Amen. There's a gift in him. And then 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 10. As each one has received a charisma. As each one has received a grace gift. A gift that you don't deserve or earn to have. That you didn't earn to have. And to use. Y'all get that. Okay. So quit trying to be holy enough. You can't be holy enough. First of all. All right. But each one has received a gift of grace from the Lord. Minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. How can you minister a gift if you don't have a gift? Amen. Amen. So God's got something for all of us. It may be, may not be big, it may not be a real big manifestation gift. It might be a body gift, but use it. That's what Peter said. You've got something. Use it. Amen. All right, does anybody get this now? So we can lay claim to whatever giftings God is that we can say the Lord has, has done in our lives and use it. Or we can say, I'm, 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 on a, I'm on a journey now to discover how God wants to use me. Yes. Amen? Uh, at, at, at the school there, if a, if a student doesn't know what they want to major in, they're in discovery. Okay? That's what some of us may. I still am in some ways. I'm still in discovery of what the Lord wants to do and work in my life. And then let's talk about real quick here as we, as we bring this to a close. The ultimate purpose. And, and we're just going I've just sort of took some highlights out of Ephesians chapter 1. Okay? Alright, now we know that the, 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 the Father, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Our warehouse Amen. is full, y'all. Amen. There's no disruption of the supply chain. There's no recession in heaven. <coughs> Amen. The economy is not depressed in the spirit of God. The warehouse is full and the trucks are moving. Amen. Okay. Uh, the Holy Ghost. It, it, he, listen, and this is something else. If you have the Holy Spirit living in your life, all the nine gifts are resident in you. Come on now. If the Holy Spirit, I told you this Sunday, I thought about this in this regard. Uh, uh, um, uh, I said Sunday, the greater one is in us. The one that created all things by speaking a word. The one that threw the stars into their place and knows them all by name. The one that, you know, heaped up the mountains and scooped out the seas and, and, and painted the grass green and the sky blue and all that, okay? He lives in you. Amen. And so if the Holy Spirit, the the executive agent of the Godhead lives in us. All that's needed is in us. We are complete in Him. Amen. Amen. 
So we just need to turn them loose. Like I said, let the line loose. He'll take care of himself. And whatever the need is, as I said a while ago, whatever the need is, God's got a way to meet that need. He didn't Amen. leave the church high and dry. Amen. He didn't leave us just out there wondering how we're going to fix things or how we're going to help people. We've got everything we need in this body of believers to meet the needs of the people that God wants us to minister to. Yes. Ooh, yeah, boy. Praise I like that. Okay. So we have every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. And he goes on to talk about how he chose us in him, in Jesus, before the foundation of the world. We were chose before the foundation of the world. In Jesus. Uh, you say, how do I know I'm chosen? Do you believe in Jesus? Well, you're chosen. Amen? All right, so we've been chosen. We've been chosen. If I was in a sermon, I'd say, turn to your neighbor and say, I'm chosen. But uh, we, I'll, I'll leave you alone. Uh, <clears throat> I won't do a T.D. Jakes on you. Uh, you know, high five your neighbor and tell them that you're chosen. Um, all right. Now, notice, having predestined us to adoption as sons, once again, by Jesus Christ. How do I know that I am a child of God? Because I believe in Jesus Christ. Okay? That was the plan that was, that was the plan from the beginning, was it would be all through Jesus Christ. Everything's through Jesus. Okay? All right, so I've been predestined from the beginning, from the foundation of the world, to be a son of God, and it's all because of what Jesus has done. Amen. All right, so he predestined us to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Now take, a note, of, uh, uh, take note of this uh, statement here. To the praise of the glory of his grace, of the charis. To the praise of the glory of His grace. Amen. Alright, by which He has made us accepted in the Beloved. Why did He make me acceptable? So that His grace could be praised forever. Yes. Woo, hallelujah. That we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of His glory. Amen. I've told y'all this before. In my mind, y'all know I love Ephesians. I've lived in it for years. Y'all know. I just, in my mind, when I'm up there in heaven, I'm going to be walking around one day on the streets of gold. You know, I told you I'm going to hammer out me a big old uh, nugget of it and wear it around my neck like a chain. Okay? And, and I'm going to be proud and, and loud up there. But I'm going to be walking on those streets of gold and the Father uh, is going to say, hey, wait a minute, there's that guy, Jesse. There's that guy. Now he's saved by grace. Amen. Look at him. Look what God brought. Look, look what I have brought him through. Look what I've done in his life. And it's all because of my grace. And all the angels are going to just burst out in praise because of the grace of God. Oh, yes. Amen. Not because of anything in me. No. no. Don't be in spite of me that I get there. Amen. You know, like John Wesley said, uh, when you get to heaven, there's going to be. Uh, uh, there's three things you're going to realize. One, you're going to be shocked that you're there. Second, you're going to be shocked at who's not there. And then you're going to be shocked at who is there. Okay? Uh, but I'm going to be there because of grace. I have nothing to boast about. It's all about grace. But God's going to... Listen, all that God is doing is so that His grace can be praised. The grace of God. Forever and ever. They're going to, we're going to shout about the grace of God. Five billion years from now, I'm going to remember, God saved me by grace. It was by His grace He saved me. I'm here because of grace. And I'm going to have a little shouting spell. Yeah. Amen. I'm going to take my necklace with my great big uh, gold on it and just be twirling it around. Just <laughs> having a time. Shouting. Amen. But that's what, I believe that's what this, what this is all about here, y'all is His grace. Praise God. Glory. Amen. And so we need to get out of this business of thinking we deserve it or we have to earn it. Yes. Amen. Right now, you're a child of God. Right now, you're accepted in the beloved. Through Christ, you're fully accepted to the Father. I shouldn't be, but I am. You shouldn't be, but you are. Mm -hmm. Fully accepted. Totally. Like you've never sinned. Praise God. Amen. Like you've never seen. You're just justified. Just as if I'd never sinned. That's Amen. what that means. You've been given that 
You've been given that legal designation by the Father that you're justified. Amen. And, and so all that He wants to do, these charismas, amen, these charismas are in our, are resident in the body of Christ so that we can go out and do the works of God so that His grace can be praised. Amen. amen. Anybody get that? Amen. amen. So tonight I say to you, you are a candidate. You are a recipient. You are qualified, amen, as anybody, to be completely able to walk in the Spirit, to be used of the Spirit, to flow in the gifts of the Spirit. Everybody in this house, amen. We are a charismatic church. Amen. And I say that not from the, the religious label that's been put on churches. I'm saying that from, from the Word of God. I can say we are charismatic. Amen. Because the charisma flows in us. And we receive and accept the gifts. Amen? Amen. Desire the best gift. Desire. Desire. That's what he said to do. So let's desire them. Let's want them. Amen?